So in this video, I'm going to rank my top 10 most improved player award candidates from the 2022-23 season. There is still about three weeks left of the regular season, but I think now is a pretty good time to conclude who the actual contenders are for this honor. I would say there's a few top tier guys, some guys that kind of fell in the middle of the pack for this award. And then the back end part of the list was tough because a few had to be left off. But anyways, without further ado, here is my top 10 list for the MIP award. Coming in at number 10 is Nick Claxton. While mostly known for his defense, Claxton has the league's best field goal percentage at nearly 71%. He's tied for second with Jared Allen in total dunks with 164 of them. Only Giannis Antetokounmpo has more. He's also second in total blocks with 165 of them behind Brook Lopez. There were several guys I had a hard time leaving off this list, so I wanted to mention them. They include Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Maxey, Jaden McDaniels, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Brooke Lopez. Number nine is Kyle Kuzma. There are nights where you might categorize Kuzma as a legit star player. Like on January 13th, he erupted for 40 points against the Knicks. He has 10 30 plus point games so far. He also had a triple double against the Bucks. But consistency continues to be a problem. Recently against Philly, he shot 4 of 14 from the field for 12 points, and then a few nights later against Cleveland, he finished with just 7 points. Still, acquiring him from the Lakers prior to last season was a great move for the Wizards. Number 8 is Keldon Johnson. As expected, the Spurs have one of the league's worst records. They will be hoping for some draft lottery luck in May. But they do have a few promising young players currently on the roster. Among them is Johnson, who's averaging nearly 22 points per game. He has scored 30 points or more seven times, including against Brooklyn on January 17th when he erupted for a career-high 36. Number 7 is Markel Fultz. The Magic started their season 5-20. and 20. They didn't have Fultz in 21 of those games because of a toe injury. Since he's come back, Orlando has been a much different team. They're above 500 in their last 46 games, and lately, Fultz has been playing the best basketball of his career. So far in March, he has scored 20 plus points 4 times, including in a win over the Clippers when he racked up a career best 28 points. Number six is Kevin Herter. Mike Brown is likely going to win the Coach of the Year award. It would be stunning if he didn't. Malik Monk is certainly in the Sixth Man of the Year conversation. DeMontis Sabonis is not going to win MVP, but he's a top 10 candidate. Herter, meanwhile, deserves some MIP consideration. He's Sacramento's top three-point shooter, currently at nearly 41%. The Kings right now have the NBA's number one offense, We'll find out in the playoffs if Sacramento can get away with being a relatively poor defensive team just by being so potent offensively. Number 5 is Jalen Brunson. What's fascinating about Brunson is that he was a deserving candidate for this honor each of the last two years as well. But unlike his time in Dallas playing alongside Luka Doncic, now he's an improved player while handling a much larger role. It's hard to find a tougher player than Brunson. Not only does he fill up the box score on a nightly basis, but he does all the intangibles too. He's third in the league in total charges taken, a category usually designated for role players and supporting cast members. Brunson has so far scored at least 30 points 16 times and at least 43 times. Number four is Mikel Bridges. Even before the trade to Brooklyn, Bridges would have likely made this list, but he's unquestionably climbed a few spots since joining the Nets. One interesting stat is that he was the first player in NBA history to average at least 25 points per game while shooting 50% from the floor, 40% from three-point distance, and 90% from the free throw line through his first 10 games with the team. He had a 45-point game against Miami in just his third game with the Nets. 
Number three is Tyrese Halliburton. Can you guess how many players in NBA history have averaged at least 20 points and 10 assists while shooting 40 plus percent from three point range? The answer is nobody, but Halliburton is on pace to do it this season. Through his first 54 games, he's averaging 20.8 points, 10.4 assists, and shooting 40.3% from beyond the arc. It's worth noting that James Harden has a chance to do it also this year. He just needs to get his three-point percentage up a bit, as he's right now at 39%. Rarely do we see a blockbuster trade be such a massive win for both sides, but that's precisely how things have played out following last year's Kings Pacers deal that sent Halliburton to Indiana and DeMontis Sabonis to Sacramento. Number two is Shea Gilgis Alexander. SGA was already a very good player coming into the season, averaging well over 20 points each of his last two years. But the improvement he's made this year, I don't think anybody saw coming. He's fourth in the league currently in scoring with 31.4 points per game. Through 60 games, he has scored 30 or more 39 times and 40 or more six times. He's third in both transition points and isolation points. Also, the Thunder have been one of the league's surprise teams. If the season ended today, they'd be in the play-in tournament. And number one is Lowry Markkanen. Interesting about Markkanen's basketball journey is that the player that he's been this year is basically what many envisioned he would be ultimately while he was a rookie in Chicago. Let's not forget that he had a very impressive first year with the Bulls, but we just didn't see massive growth throughout the rest of his tenure in Chicago and then in his one season in Cleveland. But now he's an all-star and arguably one of the top 20 players in the entire league. He's currently averaging over 25 points while shooting over 50% from the field and 40% from three-point range. There's still an outside chance of him having a 50-40-90 season with him currently at 87% from the free throw line. So that will wrap up this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe.